a 360 camera or a phone for capturing HDRIs? Which one should you use? I'm not gonna lie, I was a little shocked by the results. First of all, why should you actually capture your own HRI? There are two main reasons that HRIs are so vital in the visual effects process. The first thing is that we capture the actual lighting on the set of wherever we're filming. This is hugely important because we need to match the CGI to the footage a little bit later inside of compositing. Next is talking about reflections. If we have anything reflective, uh, such as a car into a shot, we need to have a 360 view of everything, including stuff behind the camera so that the reflections match the footage. Next, let's talk about pricing. Now for my HRI, I use the Insta360 X4. This is not sponsored or anything. This is just the one that I found that works mostly for my needs. There are plenty of options out there. Uh, there is a new X5 version if you want to stick with Insta360. And uh, Theta is another great company that a lot of people use for their 360 cameras. Additionally, you're going to need a micro SD card if you don't have one already. And then also a stand so that you can prop your HDRI up. Ideally, one that's skinny enough that it can automatically be removed in the stitching process. Next is talking about the phone. Now, I'm actually not going to go ahead and price the entire phone just because that would be thousands of dollars and of course it depends on your phone and most people already have a phone so that is why you would go with this option next is the hri app it is a subscription based app and so every single month you're going to have to pay seven dollars if you want to actually have unlimited hris so i'm going to round up with the 360 camera and it's going to be around 500 dollars with everything uh, said and done and with the app it's going to be seven dollars uh, every single month before we get into the specifics about the comparison, I wanted to thank today's sponsor, myself. Recently, I launched a brand new Kickstarter for Visual Effects Oasis. This is my dream asset library for visual effects. I wanna have everything from cinema grade footage to HRIs to visual effects assets and everything that the pros use so that you can use for free or for cheap. I remember it took me many years in my actual career to touch cinema grade footage and it really changed my game. And so I want you to have that same experience just so that you can get a job as easy as possible when going into the industry. I'd greatly appreciate it if you guys checked out the link down below and you can save up to 75% off before the site actually launches by supporting me over on the Kickstarter. Link of course is down below if you are interested, but anyways, let's get back into the video. Next, let's talk about how easy it is to use each of these devices. First, for the 360 camera, all you have to do is set up your settings inside of your uh, camera, such as ISO, shutter speed, all that type of stuff, uh, stuff that you should be natively setting on a camera by default. And then you set that up on your tripod of choice. Again, I highly recommend that you get a selfie stick, stick tripod, something that has a very skinny base, just because that will be super easy to remove inside of the stitching process, just so you can get some of that ground detail back in. The nice thing about the Insta360 is it actually pairs with an app on my phone and so I don't even have to be in the same room when I capture my HRIs. Of course this is hugely important if you are capturing your HRIs just because you don't want your own uh, image to be in the reflection of whatever CGI object that you're going to have. So if you can step away from your HRI and record stuff remotely that is a huge benefit. Another nice thing about the 360 camera is that you can manually adjust your bracketing. Say you want only five brackets or seven brackets or you want as many brackets as you want you can manually set that here versus in the app it automatically does that for you. Another thing to know is that if you're on a set this is super super quick to set up uh, it takes around like a minute uh, to actually get all the brackets say you have a dp that has set up lighting and they need to go for a shot but you want to go ahead and capture the hri before if the lighting changes or anything like that this is so much faster to go ahead and set up versus doing anything else now a major downside to actually going with a 360 camera at least the one that i use is that it doesn't automatically stitch or do any of the hri combining in the actual device itself you do have to do that manually after the process uh, using Photoshop or whatever kind of software that you use there. So keep in mind, I know Theta actually has some devices I think do automatically do it. So just uh, keep that in mind with uh, whatever 360 camera you're actually looking to get. Now for the HRI app, I really like the UI and the design. It's very self-explanatory. Uh, without any tutorials, I was able to know exactly what to One do. One annoying thing that you can't get around is when you're capturing your HRI, you have to make sure your camera is as stationary as possible because a 360 camera, it's set up on a tripod. We don't have to touch it at all, but because because we're capturing multiple different angles with our phone, you have to make sure your phone is as aligned to the center of the camera as possible to get the best results. Because of this issue, sometimes we have some weird artifacts and some stitching errors that happen depending on how shaky you actually are when capturing your HRI. Of course, you can try to put your phone on a tripod, but unless it's centered to the camera, it's still gonna move in a very uh, small sphere uh, versus a 360 camera is gonna be pinpoint accurate. Also, of course, depending on what phone that you're gonna be using, there is vastly 
slightly different amounts of quality, so just make sure you have a decent phone so that you can capture good quality images. Finally, for the setup process, I would say it's relatively quick, not as quick as a 360 camera, but it's uh, quicker than most things, especially if you're doing something with a mirrorless camera and capturing an HRI that way. Also, it's super easy to preview your HRI inside of the app, and it automatically does the stitching and the HRI creation for you, so you don't have to take this into Photoshop or anything afterwards. Finally, for the most important part of this comparison is the actual overall quality of our HRI. For the 360 camera, since we actually had it on a tripod, there's not going to be any ghosting at all. Uh, we're going to have perfect uh, reflections and it's going to be at least in 12K is what my camera shoots in. So super, super high resolution, even for the most intensive workflows. Next, if I actually go take this into a program and go ahead and crush some of the values, you can see that we have a lot more dynamic range in the actual image itself. You can see I can go all the way up uh, and see all of the highlight values. And then if we go all the way down, we can see even details in the shadow areas as well. This is hugely, hugely important in the quality of the lighting. As you can see, when we take it inside a blender and you can see it does a pretty, pretty good job indoors of the actual lighting matching to how it should look in the real world, all the way down to the shadows, it actually matches as well. Now, one of the major downsides, unfortunately, with this camera is that it doesn't do direct sunlight very well. Unfortunately, with the sensor of the 360 camera, none of the sensors of the current offerings actually go as low to capture the sun in a exact, uh, you know, perfect perfect dot in the sky. You can see if I adjust the exposure all the way down uh, to the lowest that it can go, the sun is still an entire blob into the sky. And so unfortunately, that does mean that we're going to have to add some CG lighting in a daylight scene. The nice thing is that most CG programs actually have a pretty good uh, default sunlight. And so you can use that to replace your HRI lighting in that and still use the HRI for all reflections and some fill lighting with that blue sky. Now inside of the app, there is, of course, stitching and some ghosting issues. You can see every single time I'm doing it, just because when I rotate the phone, it's not being perfectly stationary around the camera. There is going to be uh, some stitching is issues, especially if you're doing heavily reflective scenes or anything like that. You are going to notice that, especially because the max resolution of the phone is only 6K versus the 360 camera is 12K. And so that uh, means that we have so much more resolution to play around with and there's no stitching errors, unlike in the app. Of course, we all saw this coming, but the phone just doesn't have the uh, proper camera tech to actually capture high dynamic range images enough uh, compared to a 360 camera. You can see we're having a lot more clipping issues like we had in the 360 camera, but the 360 camera has a lot more detail even in the highs and the lows. And so unfortunately that does uh, come across in the lighting and the reflections of our actual final output. You can see I took two HRIs both in the same location and the same lighting uh, to compare the two. And you can see with the 360 cam version, number one, we can see a lot more shadow of the actual object. And number two, uh, the lighting is much more sharp and much more matching what our footage was actually seeing. Uh, the app actually has less shadow and that's especially noticeable because we had multiple sources of light in the scene. And the HRI is actually capturing all three of those uh, sources of light versus the app is actually only catching one uh, kind of light and it's very, very faint. It honestly feels more of a fill lighting uh, more than an actual key light hitting the actual object. So honestly, I would say the app is gonna be struggling a lot more and you're gonna have to do some fake CG lighting to add on top of your HRI, but it's uh, much better than I actually expected, uh, given that it's a phone camera doing the brackets. OK, so final thoughts. The one thing I want you to take away from this video is even the 360 camera is not the perfect solution to HRI capturing. If you are on a uh, full production uh, that needs super high resolution HRIs and stuff like that, you're much better off uh, doing a tripod setup with a, a DSLR camera, a mirrorless ca camera, anything like that. The biggest reason is because you can put ND filters and other filters on it, especially in direct daylight uh, that you can go ahead and capture more information on top of that just the resolution of mirrorless cameras alone when you stitch them all together is so much more superior and for uh, feature film level productions and stuff like that that is such a necessary step compared to a 360 camera what i will say is both of these are better than nothing of course you do uh, even with the app you get some fill lighting which is very very important to set the kind of mood for the lighting of the shot even if you do still have to add some cg key lights and stuff to match to your scene i do still think the phone app is better than not having Having anything at all. On top of that, having the reflection data in a 360 image is also amazing for a certain type of CGI so that you can use the best of both worlds. Say that you only want to use the reflection data of the HRI that we captured using the app uh, and then actually have CG lighting in the scene lighting the CG. Uh, those are uh, some workarounds that you can do to get some pretty good, uh, decent reflections inside of uh, using the phone app. Both are relatively quick and won't annoy any directors or DPs ready for a shoot on a film set. So just keep that in mind, it's 
super, super fast compared to pulling out a whole rig to capture a high quality HRI. So my final verdict is I think most visual effects artists would prefer the 360 camera. I think the app is still an amazing feature set for those that are on a budget and just need to either capture some field lighting or some reflection data for their scene. I do think the lighting and the uh, shadows especially went out on the 360 camera to where I would probably never use the HRI app uh, just because it doesn't do the uh, same things in my opinion. I feel like this is much more suited for a production ready set. Of course, the pricing does come into account. It's a lot more expensive, but honestly, a lot of that money is up front. And so once you pay for that, you're mainly only paying for a service like Photoshop or a PT GUI or something to go ahead and stitch them up together. Again, it's just so much more resolution, so much more accurate lighting. When I throw this inside a blender or anything like that, the lighting is pretty much 90% of the way there versus if I was to throw the HRI app into the uh, same exact program, I would maybe have to add a lot more CG lighting. And that's exactly what we're trying to avoid with uh, capturing our own HRI. So in my opinion, I would always stick with this. Anyways, I hope that helps clear things up about whether or not you need to go ahead and purchase a 360 camera for your visual effects workflow. Don't forget to join our Discord channel, link down below, and follow me on social media to see more behind the scenes content of the stuff that I make here. Also, make sure to check out Visual Effects Oasis on Kickstarter in order to save right now. Link is down below.